Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. In today's episode of BidX101, do we want to take a look on how to benchmark your BidX and get the most out of it? So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we're currently sitting on XS, the web UI of your BitX, and we do see I'm hashing on average around 1.09 terahash with an average efficiency of 17.62 joules per terahash, which is awesome. And today I want to show you what I was doing to achieve these numbers and what exactly is going on. Because if you do take a look, the ASIC frequency is currently set at 550 megahertz and the measured ASIC voltage is sitting at 1.14 volts. So let's dive into a GitHub repository. This one is the BitX hash rate benchmark. It was originally created by White Cookie and MRV777 changed it and modified it. And now it's a perfect tool which you can use locally on your PC and benchmark your bid eggs. Hey guys, Future One Club here. I need to make sure that you do understand what we're doing here. This is a benchmarking tool that we are trying to use to make the bid eggs more efficient. Obviously, you can overclock your bid eggs even further and achieve way higher hash rate numbers, but that's not the intended use for this tool, at least not for me and at least not for today's video. If you want to see anything like how can we achieve the highest number possible hash rate wise on a bid eggs, make sure to comment this down below in the comment section so that I do know this and make a video about it. So what is this? It is a Python based benchmarking tool that tries to optimize your bid eggs for mining performance but you can also choose to use the best efficiency or the best hash rate, whatever you do prefer. Some of you guys are into overclocking and this kind of stuff. I'm not really into that, but I still want to show you what this tool is capable of. And before you dive into this and think, well, in five minutes, I'm going to have the most hash rate out of my BitX. This benchmarking tool takes around half an hour to 40 minutes. So take your time and you need to be prepared. We do have a couple of prerequisites that you need to have on your PC. I'm doing this recording on my Windows PC so that most of you guys are also do this. Usually I'm only on my Linux machine, but today I try to do this on Windows. Uh, you need to have Python. You need to have, if you want to take a look on it beautifully, <laughs> you need to have VS Code as well as uh, Git and a couple other things. But basically Python, VS Code, a bit X obviously, and Git installed on your PC is all that you do need. What you want to do is you basically would just want to follow the installation instructions here. What you're going to do is you clone the repository, you go into the repository, then you create a virtual environment for it, you activate it, and then we can actually go with installing the requirements for this installation or this benchmarking tool and afterwards we can use it with this command and basically that's it but what I want to do is I want to hop over to VS Code and I want to show you what it looks like so in here in VS Code I obviously already have downloaded the BitX hash rate benchmarking tool so in here we do see a couple of files for example we do have a JSON file because I already did the benchmarking test and a couple other files as well as the license by the way this is published under the GPL v3 license so uh, you can basically do whatever you want with this tool but if you do change it, you need to provide the source to it. Obviously, make it open source as well. This is just the right way for open sourcing software and hardware, in my general opinion. It's just my opinion. But well, what, what does this do? It is going through a couple of different settings on your BitX and it is trying to monitor them. And at the end, it will tell you what it is doing. You do see here down on my logs, if you zoom into that, we do see that we are getting a couple of information. For example, this is the, uh, for this specific settings that it applied to it, the 11th round of it. And uh, we do see the progress per this round. We also see the core voltage for the ASIC. We see the frequency for the ASIC and the hash rate that we do get out of it as well as the input voltage as well as the temperature and the temperature from the back converter these are really relevant informations that we do need and if you do scroll down here uh, we do see that here it was stopping on these high settings because it was exceeding 66 degrees celsius and the benchmark is not intended to be hey get the most out of it but 
stay cool and now get the most out of it. And afterwards it will tell you what the best setting, settings is. Uh, here it tells me which thermal or stability limit stopping further testing. This is all right. And now it's applying the best settings for benchmarking. It's giving me the core voltage and the frequency and it saves it in the JSON file. If you do go into this, let me zoom out here. We do see a whole list of all the uh, different ranks for everything that we do got. If you scroll down here, we do see the highest hash rate settings, which are those ones. They are ranked from one to five, and then we'd get the most efficient settings. They are also ranked from one to five. Here we also do, we see a efficiency of 16.21 joules per terash, which is just amazing. And yeah, so this is basically the tool. How do you use it? Well, let's hop back again into it. And we assume, or I assume you already have cloned the repository. You can either do this in your CLI, so in your command line tool, or you can do this in VS Code. Both will work. What you wanna do is you wanna open up a virtual environment. So if you go into VS Code, we can type in Python dash M venv venv and this should open up a virtual environment for this specific path that we're currently in. Now what we wanna do is we wanna activate it. We just copy this because I'm on Windows. Now we go back, we activate it, and it's telling me, well, I'm already activated, uh, don't mind me. So that's totally fine. Then what we can do is we can use the command uh, Python 3, dot backslash bitx underscore hash rate underscore benchmark dot pi and this will run the test. What you need to apply here is you need to apply the IP address of your bitx and in this case I was I'm applying the IP address of my bitx gamma and with that it will automatically start run the test it needs some time leave your computer online and it will automatically check all the settings that are safe and it will automatically set your bitx afterwards to the best settings that it actually found and recorded and with that, you're basically able to boost your bit a little bit and make it faster or more efficient. And you don't need to play around manually with all these settings. You can do this just with this one command, which is amazing. Obviously, you need to do this with every single bit that you do have. But still, I think it's a way better idea to do it this way than trying on every single bit the settings and figuring out which one is actually the best. The increment here is also really interesting because it's incrementing in smaller steps. If you do take a look into the Python script here, we do see that it is trying to apply different settings here. Uh, we see increments, let me quickly see that. Benchmarking iteration, we do see that we do have iterations here from the hash rate, temperature, and so on. So it's trying to go slowly upwards to a desired value. And if it hits some sort of a weak spot, for example, the 66 degrees that you saw earlier, then it will just say, well, I'm I'm not wanna push for the limits here. I wanna stay in a safe range and it's trying to apply these settings later on. So using this tool is kinda nice. It also gives you some sort of information about what you can do with it or not. Let me quickly see if we can have a dash H. Uh, we do see we can also put in our own values if you wanna do that. We get here the positional argument, which is the IP address of the bit uh, It also gives you the options of voltage and frequency. So maybe you wanna do this with other voltages and not the default one. The default one is starting at uh, 1.15 volts and 500 megahertz for the ASIC. If you wanna start somewhere higher, you can apply them here. So for example, if I would uh, type in now dash F, I could start from 600 megahertz, for example, but leave the voltage as it is. This will be possible. And I think that's a really nice feature. That's it for today's episode of BitX101. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did so, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you found this video informational. Thanks for watching. See you next time.